Hi, welcome to another video of my Cisco Meraki series. In this video, I'm gonna set up a side-to-side -side VPN between a Meraki Z1 and a Meraki MX64. In the previous video, I connected the Z1, which is in the branch office, aka bedroom, uh, to the internet. And way before that, in another video, I connected the MX64 security appliance, which is in the HQ, aka living room, to the internet. I'm gonna put the links to all my previous Meraki videos in the video description in case you wanna check them out to better understand what we have done so far. So the MX64 is directly connected to my cable modem. The Z1 though is connected to my wireless router which is connected to my phone. Basically Z1 is connected to internet through my phone. Although they're both online at this point, the branch office clients cannot access the HQ LAN yet. And in order for that to happen, I will need a site-to-site -site VPN connection. So this site-to-site -site VPN between Meraki devices is actually called Auto VPN because you can pretty much configure it with a single click. Basically what I would do is to enable the site-to-site -site VPN on any security appliance that I want to participate in the Auto VPN. Then they're gonna advertise their local subnets, I mean the subnets that are supposed to participate in the VPN, and also their WAN IP addresses. Now based on these advertised information, the dashboard is going to generate a global VPN route table, which the security appliances are going to download it along with the pre-shared key for establishing the VPN tunnel and traffic encryption. Okay, so let's begin. First, I'm going to enable the site-to-site -site VPN for the MX64, uh, which is in the HQ and the network name is Meraki Net. As you can see right now, the site-to-site -site VPN for the MX64 is off, which means this device is not participating in the VPN. I can enable it by selecting either Hub or Spoke. Hub actually would work like a mesh network. Basically, in the Hub mode, the MX64 is gonna establish VPN tunnels to all other Meraki VPN peers that are also in the Hub mode, as well as the ones that are in Spoke mode and have the MX64 configured as a Hub. So basically the Spoke device only establishes direct VPN tunnels to the specified hubs. In my case there's gonna be only two VPN peers so it won't be that complicated. I will select hub for my MX64 and as a hub I can also select exit hubs. If of course there are other hubs available, in my case there isn't any so I wouldn't worry about it for now. But if there are multiple hubs and I select one of them as an exit hub for my MX64, then it's gonna create a full tunnel configuration where all traffic from the MX64 destined to a default route is gonna be sent to the exit hub. Unless of course there is a more specific route. Which in that case, the more specific route would take precedence. But as I said, this is not something I wanna configure for now. VPN subnet translation is actually going to translate the local subnet into a new subnet and it is useful if different locations have the same subnets. For example, let's say if my HQ and branch office both have this subnet, I can use this feature to translate them into these new subnets. Now, even though both networks have identical subnets, they can communicate over the VPN using their translated VPN subnets. Local networks is actually where I can choose which subnets should participate in the VPN. And I'm gonna select these three VLANs of my MX64 to participate in my VPN. If my MX64 is behind another firewall or NAT device, then it's gonna have a private IP address, therefore not directly accessible from the outside. This could be a problem for the VPN connection. Now with the automatic NAT traversal, the MX will use a technique called UDP hole punching to establish the site-to-site -site VPN to the other Meraki peers even though it is behind the NAT. In most cases it should work fine, but if it doesn't then manual port forwarding can be used. This way the Meraki peers contact the MX security appliance using the specified public IP address and UDP port number. Then I will also need to configure the upstream device to forward all the incoming traffic on that UDP port to the IP address of the MX. The MX64 is not behind NAT, so I just leave it to be in the automatic mode which is the default one. 
This section is for configuring non-Meraki VPN peers. That actually could be the subject of another video, but for now I only have Meraki peers, so I don't need to configure anything here. This section is to create firewall rules for the VPN to control what traffic is allowed to pass the VPN tunnel. It is also not something I want to use for now. Now let's go to the branch office where the Z1 is connected. For the Z1 site to site VPN I'm going to select spoke and I'm going to add a hub which of course is going to be the MX64 at the HQ. If I don't check this default route then the VPN tunnel is going to be a split tunnel. As a split tunnel, if the traffic is destined for let's say this subnet, then it's gonna be sent over the VPN tunnel. But if the traffic is destined for a network that is not in the VPN mesh, for example a public server such as google.com, then it's not gonna be sent over the VPN tunnel. But if I select the default route, then instead of a split tunnel, I will have a full tunnel. And in this case, in both examples, the traffic is gonna go through the VPN tunnel. I don't need a full tunnel for now, so I just leave it unchecked. And I'm not gonna use subnet translation here either, because obviously there is no overlapping subnets. The Z1 has only one subnet and I'll make sure it is participating in the VPN. The Z1 unlike the MX64 is actually behind NAT. It is connected to my wireless router. So I'm gonna see if the automatic NAT traversal can actually establish the VPN tunnel. If not then I'll consider manual port forwarding. As you can see now that I have enabled the site to site VPN on the MX64, I can see the remote VPN participants here which is good. Okay, so the site to site VPN is enabled for both devices. I can now check the VPN status here. If I check the status for Meraki Net, I can see that everything is green here, which is good. Also, the branch office is connected. Now if I go to the branch office, I can see that everything is green here too. As you can see it has detected that Z1 is behind NAT and it looks like the automatic NAT traversal has actually done its job. Also I can see that the Meraki net is connected. Alright that was pretty much it and I hope you liked this video. Please hit that like button if you did, share it if you think others might like it too and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you very much and I will see you next time.